face down. Let's be three feet apart. All right. Here we go. Hello, and welcome to the demonstration of the North Star Big Blue Extruder. We are recording from Waterbrook Pottery Studio in the lovely uh, small city of Waterville, New York. So today we're going to show you how to um, understand the extruder and the components. We're going to show you how to put it together properly. We're going to show you how to extrude properly and we're going to show you how to clean up properly. And there's a lot of little tidbits that hopefully us sharing with you will make your extrusion go well. And we learn those tidbits by kind of doing it wrong. Well, that's right, <laughs> trial and error. But we can save you some of that error by, um, by showing you some the, the right way to do it. I also want you to know that you can go to the North Star website and you can read all about the Big Blue Extruder. And I've printed out a little copy of the entire manual, which you should read before you extrude. It's a very easy, quick read and it will be worth your time, okay? All the little pieces of the extruder live in this little three-tiered cart, which is stored right next to the big blue extruder. In here, you're gonna find nuts and bolts, you're gonna find brackets, you're gonna find the, all the die components, you're gonna find the Allen wrench, and you're gonna find the toothbrush. Do not throw away this toothbrush. This is for cleaning out the little grooves and nooks and crannies of your extruder. Also, a cutting wire. Yes. You're going to need that. You're going to want that. All right. So, we want to show you some of the shapes that we've successfully done with the extruder. This is a square cylinder, which Maureen made into a lovely birdhouse. This is a hexagon cylinder which I've added feet and decals to. It is my toothbrush holder from home. You can do lots of fun stuff with surface design and little add-ons. This one has little buttons and feet. Um, this is a toothbrush holder or vase with attitude. Here's another one with attitude because a little coil and a little sprig at the side can make a very fun shape for all kinds of things. I use this kind of shape for a windowsill parsley holder in my kitchen. Or a mug. Or, or a mug, that's right. This is a lovely little mug, just add a handle, which is actually a little trimmed off part of the extrusion and a bottom. This was a round, the large round extrusion. Do you wanna hold that one up, Maureen? The, um, that's the die that this shape was made with, and this was done by Patty Murray, our associate member. And she has a little vase with attitude and cut out eyes. So you can do a lot with this, with these extrusions. This is a hexagon extrusion, and Maureen is, can show you, we've got a few this demos. A, vase, a teapot, a little, perhaps, honey bowl or honey sugar bowl. bowl. Sugar bowl. And a utensil holder a utensil. or vase, larger vase with, with attitude. attitude. All right, and this is the die that goes with that. All the die have brackets, and I want to show you the one that goes to the big ones and show you what can happen in terms of damage to parts. Even though this is stainless steel, somebody probably tried to extrude with an unclean die and then the pressure and weight of the clay, and the, I don't know what the PSI is coming through the barrel with the small extrusion here, but it's great, actually bent the bracket. We have a new one on order, and then when the new one comes, this one will be removed. But don't use the big die unless you've got a nice straight bracket because it will just cause further damage to the die, and you won't really be able to get it in the holes. Okay, something you need to know about the die is that they need to be clean. When Maureen and I started practicing for this video, we found a lot of pieces that looked like this. And you can see that somebody left their clay body in it. The grooves are caked with clay. This is not going to work for a number of reasons. 
uh, you're not going to get good contact with the bracket. Oh, and here's an example of how not to leave the bracket. These little parts have to sit nice and neatly in this, in this uh, bracket. And by not having good contact, again, the pressure of the clay and the clay body that was left in there, this one's actually pretty bent. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it still works, but I think sloppiness leads to damage with this tool. So we're going to take our favorite cleaning tool, and you're literally going to scrub out all the clay that's left behind. You're going to want to do that before you extrude and after you extrude um, so that we're, leaving, we're starting to leave things cleaner and cleaner. We'll also give this a shot with PAM or WD-40 to lubricate it so that uh, it's easier to clean later and we get less clay sticking. So we're going to throw that in a bucket of water mm -hmm. and proceed with setting up our extrusion for today. Today we're going to use a square cylinder. Shh, guys, push. We're going to use the square cylinder. Um, it goes together like this. You uh, obviously, this is the little center of the cylinder and the pieces fit nice and neatly. This is a nice clean fit. Even though the bracket has been bent, we think we're still going to get a good extrusion with this. All right. This will sit inside a larger bracket, and we're going to back up and show you the barrel. We actually we have it here in the barrel. So we might as well move on right. to how to take apart the extruder. The first thing is you feel for the cotter pin, and you can see it here. You kind of push it out with your thumb. Now when you put it in, you are tempted to put it in this way. If you do, and it, you have a big um, die in there, this will just ruin your clay piece. Right. So it really does have to face the wall, even though it's awkward at times to get out. And you lift it up. But the plunger has to be all the way up in order to do that. And that's just done by doing counterclockwise. Yep. So Maureen's going to take apart the barrel. And then we'll show you the pieces. And this Allen wrench we keep here, and it's the right size, so we're well, all set. She, yep. While she's doing that, I'll just show you the other parts to this. This is obviously, this is called the wagon wheel in the manual. But this is how you turn. And when you turn, you're going to go pretty slowly and smoothly. You do not want to be spinning this thing. Um, because when you have clay in it, you know, you, you're pressing a lot of force down upon a, a pretty much a small exit area. And it needs to heal as it comes through the bracket and the die. So you, the, nice and smooth. Um, and then this, I call this the plunger. And this is the plunger foot. This has another, this has another cotter pin here. Um, you're really just going to remove this for cleaning, but it's essential that you remove it for cleaning. Look how clean that is. <gasps> I wonder if you need to spray it. it. Oh, you need to spray it with PAM or WD-40. We can leave that down. Okay. Now I've got the, um, the bolts off. They're right here. They fit right down. And we only have two of them, so you can't lose one. This is the bottom part. Now this is what we were talking about as what that will fit into. Yes, this is the bracket for the, um, for the die. And it's going to go like this. Always that is facing down. The, the, yes. Apple, the, the, nut. the nut faces down. Even though you think that this is going to chop up your piece, it's not. It literally, the pressure, it heals on its way out. So, um, as Maureen said, nut, nut side down. Okay, and now we're ready to put it together. First, we might want to spray the sides. Must spray the sides. Must. So, so lubricating the foot and the inside of the barrel saves it from pitting against um, any of the um, chemical compounds in the clay or the sand or the grit in the clay. And it also makes your cleanup a lot easier, and it lets the clay glide through. 
So you definitely want to do that. And I would, I don't know, should we lubricate the dye too? I think so. Let's we give the dye a shot too. And I am putting this back in. It's one of the reasons we like, and it will only fit one way. So we're good that way. And we can put it in at least this way. And this is bent because when I was doing it one time, I got it caught. So again, a lot of what we're telling you is just trial by error, and um, it's and always fine. And the cleaner it is, the better it is. Like these little cotter pins have, if you're not familiar with this type of, of um, connector, it's got a little movable piece in here. And I think, you know, when they're clean and they're not caked with uh, clay, and they're lubricated, they tend to work good. I just gave that a little shot. Um, mm -hmm. All right, it's a safety feature too, because not only does it help you line up with your barrel, also when you're rolling this thing up, the plunger is stuck to the clay. You could lift this whole thing up. If this lifts, lifts up and falls down, you're gonna damage the piece of equipment and you're gonna hurt your foot. So, Again, it's, it's, uh, it's important that you make sure that all three cotter pins are in place. You're never going to move this cotter pin. This is what holds the wheel on. But this and this, you're going to move every time you extrude. Move and replace. All right. Now, if you see this, one side has no shapes. This has these lines, which is where and how it will fit. <coughs> It's important that they line up properly. Uh, sloppy potters who have preceded us have done a disservice to us by probably using it dirty. All right, but it doesn't want to go that way. It does want to go better this way. Okay. And then Maureen is going to put the screws in. This um, bottom bottom bracket that holds the die in, these screws are put in with an Allen wrench. Again, this is a this is aluminum, so you don't want to over tighten it. You want to just snug it up, but not over tighten it. If you over tighten it, things are gonna. Um, you could strip the screws, and also you could bend the aluminum. Aluminum is kind of soft. Now what's going to happen is, it's possible that we're going to get some clay that comes out of the seam. Partly that's because it's an old extruder, it's been used a lot. Maybe um, in the future we could maybe make a gasket or something like that. I did see that um, people use an inner tube to make a nice gasket to improve the fit over time. But uh, just tolerate that. As long as it's not a ton coming out, you should be fine. Right, now we're going to put the barrel back in, and the and plunger the has to be all the way up, so I'm going to roll this up. Go ahead, Maureen. And the sign faces you, which is an easy thing. Yep. You're gonna be and you have to be careful to handle this in between yes. face. Um, and that, there is a little lip, if you can see that, that that'll go right into. And then the cotter pin, and again, only because we've learned you do it from the back out. Yep. And we're okay. going to take it out again and load the clay this time. So, barrel is all the way up. Cotter pin comes out. You shove it with your thumb. Up a little bit and out at an end. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add the... Maybe can you, can you tip that in? So this is going to sit in with gravity. These small die are going to sit in with gravity. If we were using a bigger one, it might, I think the bracket screws in all the way. So we're going to fit it in carefully. It's, it's all in there, all happy, all lubricated. And we're going, to put, we're going to place chunks of already wedged clay into the barrel. And those are over there. Mm -hmm. um, the reason we think wedging is worth the extra time is that just like you wouldn't take a, a square of clay out of the bag and just start throwing with it, it kind of prepares the clay to move nicely. So we're going to slide this in nice and easy. 
and let it set down. The first one particularly do nice and easy, otherwise it sets off. Though. Yeah, you can dislodge that bracket easily because it's just sitting in there with gravity. And we'll put one more in on top. So that's what that looks like there. Now some people might say, why don't you just trim the clay from the bag? I've done that early on. I've done that. And I don't think that the clay, I don't think the extruded pieces come out as nice. Maureen is now showing it who's boss. That's right. Now All right. let's see if I've done a good job. In she goes. In she Perfect. Goes. Now, this is going to be about, I don't know, 15 pounds? Probably. All right, so just be prepared. Yeah. And so again, here we go back here. Is our plunger all the way up? Yes. Did we lubricate it? Not yet. Yeah, I did. You did? Oh, oh, it's nice and greasy. Perfect. Somebody asked me, one of the other studio members said she saw a video where people wrap the clay in plastic. Don't do that for Big Blue. That was a completely, there's a video online. It's a completely different extruder and we don't recommend that. If in doubt, refer to the North Star Manual. It will explain all the whys and whatnots and wherefores. So, Maureen's putting the cotter pin in. Unsuccessfully. Unsuccessfully. Oh, it's probably giving her trouble because it's not lined up. So oh. this, this screw, there's a little bit of wiggle in there. Oh, it's, it's actually going to go over here. Okay, so this is off center. So if you're having trouble with the cotter pin, it just means that the barrel isn't really lined up with the, with the bracket. bracket. Yeah, All right. Okay. So we're going to do this with three of us. Vince is going to come over and be the cutter. Uh, he's basically going to take the um, cutting tool. Hi, Vince. Hi. This is Vince. And Vince is going to cut. Maureen is going to do the wagon wheel, and I'm going to, basically it's kind of like birthing a baby. I'm going to receive the clay and maybe move it a little bit and show you different ways we can extrude it. Okay, I'm going to go over here for this. Okay. Ta -da. Dancing. Let's do that again. Ta -da. All right. Here we go. All right. Okay. Slower. Takes a little Slow while. Down. Yeah. And you're going to feel when it hits yes, the clay. Yes, definitely feel it. And you cannot really go fast at that point. No. And you don't, yeah. So we're seeing some of the, the lube come out here. And here we're comes. We're also seeing. Okay, let's stop there. So Vince is going to cut using the uh, bottom bracket as a guide. That Perfect is cut. a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And we're going to put that here. Just stand it up to dry. And you can see, all on its own, I didn't really do anything. What a cute little suggestion of a, some kind of a special uh, finished piece that already is. So this time, if, the, if Maureen goes nice and slow, I'm going to try to nudge it and make a twist. And I'm going to be doing that from the relatively from the top here. Okay, a little faster, I think. As it right near the die, so that my fingers have something to work up against. Okay. Okay, so, ooh, that's kind of pretty. I guess I was a little firm with that, but you can certainly shove a dowel in it if it's real soft. Our clay is pretty soft, but it should set up pretty nicely soon. Anyway, so that's a, that's a project waiting to happen. Those nice straight cuts really let them 
sit, sit nicely. And then this one I think I'm going to pull towards me and make a curve. Mm -hmm. See how at least two people are, is comfortable with this. Yep. With one, you have to do a lot of pre-thinking, and three is optimum. And if you notice here, this is what we were talking about. You might get a little bit coming through. It really is minor. Also, there's going to be like some of these have some air bubbles in it. Um, you can either fill those afterwards when they're a little bit harder. You can plug it up. But this actually has a couple little places where mm -hmm. you're going to know that you're going to need to pay extra attention. And you can see where it has a little bit of wear and tear on the, it's probably the seam where the, um, where the bracket is. Because it was just, yeah, so you're going to want to, yeah, you're going to want to smooth that with the rib. Okay. Vince, what kind of a piece do you want this time? I want the curve. The curve? Okay. Well, we will try the, the last one we did. Okay. So we're getting a little bit of clay coming through here. We're not going to worry about it. We're definitely not going to tighten this thing now. Uh, and it's getting fairly tight. And as you can see, it's going down lower. So we don't have a whole lot of clay left. Right. OK, Vince. Well, that's great. <laughs> and a good catch. And if that was the baby, that would have saved a big problem. Okay. All right, we'll see what's left. Maureen, what kind of piece are you looking for? Twist, straight? Mm, straight. Straight. And believe it or not, if when you're cutting, you really need to keep it straight across here, or you can mess up in the cutting part. If you actually put it on the base and just use that as the yes. uh, uh, guide, it works perfect. Because I have messed up cutting. How big can you go? Can you extrude all the way to the floor? You could, yeah. Okay. I think it would be a little You better need, uh, you better have somebody else there with you. I think, too, you know, the, it, the longer the piece is, the floppier it gets. Okay, Vince, you want to cut that? Um, and then, you have to, too, you have to think about firing it. So like a round are, shape if it's too long, that one part will flatten just as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're more likely to, to have it collapse. This might be our last. This might be it? Okay. Okay. And, uh, oh, nice. Okay, you want to cut it? You think there's any more in there? Yes, I think we should cut it and do one more short one. Okay. You can make really fun pieces with the short ones. You can make little succulent planters. You can make little little dishes. These are pretty long. I would say that I probably would cut this in half. There is actually. And it gets a little harder. Let's cut, Let's cut this. To press as we go down. And it's actually setting up kind of nice, like this piece. There's no air bubbles. It's mm -hmm. just really nice. I can tell by touching it that. And as you see, the line does go together. Yeah. I don't know if you can, if the camera will actually pick up on that or not. But there is a line there, and on the other side, there's a line there, and that's where it healed. Now there's no cut. There's no cut. If your clay wasn't this nice and moist and wedged going through, I have had a whole extrusion 
where all the pieces kind of split at the seam. So, you know, just that can happen. And I think the, t the you want the same moistness of clay that you would for uh, throwing on the wheel. Right, with, oh, that sounded that's like that was it. Yeah, that's it. It made a little pop, like a little suction pop. Okay, very lovely little piece there. So this we extruded one, two, three, four, five, six, nine pieces. From, with, from about 20? Yeah. 15 pounds? 15 pounds we have, so we used a sleeve of B Mix 5 with Grog. There's one more piece of B Mix 5, but if you wanted to reload, you most certainly could at this point. You would bring the barrel all the way to the top. And you see how it just wanted to pull this whole barrel up? If we hadn't had that cotter pin there securing mm -hmm. it, that easily could have gone right up along with the plunger. Okay, there it is. Cotter pin out. Lift it off the lip. Now, it actually took the drop-in part of the die that's up against the plunger, so if you wanna, if you wanna roll that down. And one time this was put through on a separate one. Now look at that, isn't that really interesting when you look at it? And we could cut that off. Yep. We which I find it's a little easier to clean when you do it that way. We could take the whole foot off. And then just, you know, cut it off from there and then start And there's cleaning. your die. It's sitting there. Don't make the mistake of throwing this plug away without realizing that your bracket and your die are right in there because that's how we lose parts. And if you, if you were to go to the North Star website or the Sheffield Pottery website, you would see that three sets of these die are about $90. So they're not cheap. And the bracket which I just purchased the big bracket for the larger dies because this one was too bent to use. 50 bucks for that little stainless steel bracket with three screws. All right, so we want to scrape this off with mm -hmm. a putty knife and reload. I'll get the knife. Okay. So or just actually, with a wire. Yeah, actually I think using your hand is probably the best tool of all. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about do's and don'ts while we get ready to put the bracket back in. Here it comes. Boop. I got it, actually. So if you think doing the extruder is a quick, easy thing, you are wrong. With getting the pieces to come out is quick. But we just changed the die, and it took us uh, 15 minutes to properly clean, reseat the new die in there. We had to take it apart twice because it wasn't quite fitting because there was a little bit of clay residue in the bracket. So it is not quick. It is fairly easy if you're putting it together and taking it apart right. But it, you're going to want to have 30 minutes for setup and at least 30 minutes for cleanup at the end. And if you're changing die, you're going to want to add an extra 20 minutes because you we didn't put the clay in. You're doing some cleanup there. Okay, so it's clean. It's got the baguette tray, the small baguette tray in, and Hold now on. we're going to put the clay in. And kind of carefully because again, this is just a gravity seated um, a gravity seated die. All right. Again, the North Star label faces out. It's, it's in. I got it from here. You're going to come in through the back. Otherwise, you, the wire might affect your extrusion. And when it's lined up properly, the pin comes in and out nice. Yes. All okay. right. So. We are now making baguette trays. Okay, it goes pretty fast until it hits the clay. And we're gonna want nice straight pieces, and we don't need super long ones this time. Here it comes. 
I see it crowning. Here and now comes. the resistance starts. Okay. And let's cut here. This one is looks a little... Yeah, the first one adds a little curvy. And actually, as clean as we were, there's some drier clay residue that scratched that up. Now that's easy to fix, but I just wanted to show you as an example. All right, the next one should be better. There's a little air bubble there. Go a little bit more and stop. And when I'm laying them down, I'm trying to make sure that the, that the tray, the, the feet, are making good contact with the flat surface. There's another little blip there. Okay, you want to cut that, Vince? Oh yeah, this had an air pocket in it too. But again, you can work around that with a rib. Mm -hmm. I hear it, air. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And you can see what a nice dye this is, how it makes these lovely little feet that I just crushed. <laughs> okay. And we don't have that much clay. We only have about Maybe about five or six pounds of clay I in this. Yeah. At the most. Here comes the nicest one so far. No dried crumbs. And that's good. Let's and that's what I've noticed as they do come out. The air bubbles are less. Yeah, I think that the first couple pieces are usually not your best ones. Nice. Let's stop there. And we're probably getting close because the plunger's the plunger's pretty low. One. Yeah, that's good. That's probably nice right there. Oh, this I think is the nicest piece yet. And it's already starting to firm up, which I love B-Mix 5 with Grog. It's, it's already keeping its shape so nicely. What a cute shape that is. Okay. And we are almost. We're almost done. And you don't want to. You don't want to force it. So and this is it. This is it. A so that's smile. A little, a little smile. Oh, it looks like the Kool Aid. <laughs> the Kool Aid pitcher man smile. Okay. All right. And right, now we're going to take it apart and clean the heck out of this thing. Plunger up to the top. And remember what, when you're. When you're down at the end, when you meet that resistance, don't be forcing this thing because it's aluminum and it can bend. These and you really do feel it. Yes. It's not a matter of what. Right. Right. You do not want to. You do not want to force any part of this thing. Cotter pin out. Usually pushing it back with your thumb is the way to go. There she blows. All right and lifting it up out of the tray and then straight down and now i'm going to move this down again to take off that other piece that you saw you're going to want to resist the urge to take screwdrivers or metal tools to pry off your parts now it is, this time the die stayed in, so a lot of times that little die insert is going to stick to your clay, but you should really remove, you should really remove the clay from the metal parts with your hand, 
um, and don't ever take a hammer or a screwdriver to try to pry any of these parts apart. Go to the sink, soak it. If you've got clay stuck all in there, your, the sink and the toothbrush and a sponge is the best way to roll. Um, so we're gonna take apart, we're gonna take apart this, uh, the bracket and the die. All of this is gonna go to the sink. It's gonna get scrubbed out with a toothbrush. The um, screws should be clean and free from debris. I would not put the screws in the water, just wipe them clean. And, uh, and of course the plunger. You can see that there's, all, there's, there's clay body and all kinds of parts of it. Take that to the sink and clean it up real good. And then we'll reassemble it at the end and that'll be it. So just a couple, just a couple points about cleanup. Um, you're going to want to make sure that there are the nuts and the Allen wrench, the brackets. You're going to want to make sure all this stuff is sitting, the little parts are sitting in this dish, and that you don't let these pieces migrate. Please don't leave them in the sink. Somebody may not be familiar with where these parts go. Please don't put your lump of clay that's attached to the plunger at the end of your extrusion please just don't carelessly pull that clay off and throw it in for clay recycling. Uh, we've lost brackets and inserts such as this, which are important for these uh, hollow tubes, um, probably even since we've moved here. Um, if you would like to set up a time to extrude with people that already know how to extrude, please reach out. You could reach out to me directly you could reach out to Maureen. Uh, we slowly want to get people who are interested trained up. We've, um, we believe that uh, the teach one, do one kind of philosophy is, is a good way to roll. We have the North Star manual here. It's for the big blue. You can read about it online. And we'd like all the pieces and parts to go back squeaky clean into the cart, okay? Some of these aren't squeaky clean enough for my standards because the bracket's not gonna sit nice into this. So you're gonna wanna clean these up really good before you start extruding. Let's see. Um, picking your clay body, if you're gonna go long, um, you probably wanna use something that's got some grit to it. If you're gonna wanna make dainty little um, sweet little cups that feel good on your lip, you're probably not going to want to use a uh, groggy clay. All right, so to do short pieces, your smoother clays are fine.